So you're outside today. Yep. How's your ribs? Everybody wants to know. They're coming along. You're not you're not leaving them behind? Uh well I was thinking about cooking them and yeah, sure. Come on. Put a little barbecue sauce on them. Yeah, right. <laughs> God, that's just disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what we all want to know is how many more weeks before you can sing? Before I can sing? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that, that requires brain power. Well, it requires lung power, which has to do with the broken rib. <laughs> hey, I'll see you later. I can't hit. I hit, can't hit the high notes. I'll see you later. I'm going for a ride. I'll I'll be here. Hi, friends. Well, Lynn is doing better, and I am doing just fine. Um, got a lot of questions about well, what's going on with Jerry. It's been eight years since I had a diverticulitis attack, but that's what was going on. And yes, I did go to the doctor, and I've been on meds for four days, so all is well. Hi, Pedro. Hola. ¿Cómo está? Bien, bien, gracias. Pedro uh, cleans the pool. I've got my GoPro mounted there. And uh, those magnets right up there on the dash, that's where this camera that's in my hand is going to go. And as promised, I'm going to drive you around one of the neighborhoods today on the north shore of Lake Chapala. Let's go. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. We're leaving... San Antonio Tlacapan and going into La Floresta, right there where the trees meet above your head. The locals used to call it the marriage of the trees. We're going to take a tour of Upper La Floresta and Lower La Floresta today. In my opinion, this neighborhood would be in the mid-range of prices here on the north shore of Lake Chapala. But it really doesn't mean anything when you say that because homes are all custom built here and you might have a mid-range priced house next door to a palace. Um, you won't find any low-range priced houses in La Floresta. There are lots more expensive places and of course there are lots less expensive places. Um, you're going to notice as we come into La Floresta that it used to be a gated community. There's a thing that comes down across the road and a guard house, but once these older neighborhoods are established, a lot of times the uh, Fraxiamento or the Homeowners Association decides they don't want to pay 24-7 for a guard anymore, so they don't have them. There are some guarded uh, places at Lakeside, so if you need that, it is available. I have figured out that my dash cam magnet system there is just fine on the highway. Here on the cobblestone streets, it's just worthless, no matter how good the stabilization is. So, I'm holding in my hand. La Foresta has these things in the middle of the street at many of the intersections, but they have really big wide streets. And all of the houses are set back from the curb. So there's a lot of green grass and plantings that are along the street. It's a very nice neighborhood piles of dirt in the street, that means there's construction going on at that house. We're approaching one of my favorite houses to show people when, I'm, when I've got guests in town. This house is covered by ceramic tile every square inch of the exterior.
Don't know what that thing is. Oh, dog content. One of the curious things about this house is that it's been for sale at least two times that I know of since I've been in town. And that would mean that there are at least three people who thought that this was acceptable. It's just a little out there for my taste. Interesting, though. As I'm editing this and doing the voiceover, I realize I have some practicing to do with the camera. As I do these drive arounds, I will get better. Sorry about this. I watched this yellow house over here on the corner being built. I lived down the street in 2002. And I learned a lot by just walking up here every day and seeing what they were doing. I mean, I learned a lot about how houses are built here. At least I thought I learned a lot until I started building my own and I found out how much I didn't know. As I'm driving around here, I'm remembering that when I first came to uh, Ahihik, one of my favorite things to do was just drive around and look at things. So I hope you have the same enjoyment of doing that that I did back then. I will take you to a lot of different neighborhoods as we do these videos. There are some very poor neighborhoods and there are some very wealthy neighborhoods. Oh, there's a big palapa. I only see the top of it. I have to stress again for the people who always say, oh, you have a big wall because you're worried about security. It's not about security. It's about privacy. And I always like to make the point that if you live in a tract home or an apartment in the United States, it's a hard concept. But if you live in Beverly Hills in the United States, you probably understand. It's not about security. It's about privacy. And my friend Kevin up the street made the comment the other day that it's not only about security, and of course it is about privacy, but anybody can crawl over these walls. It's also about the bigger and prettier your wall, the more prestigious it is. You have a big fancy gate, you have a big fancy house. I've been one of those in Vancouver, Washington. Somebody I know. 10,000 square foot house, big fancy gate. Around the corner is a house that's very special to me. Not because I know the people, I don't know them. I found this house when I first came to Ahihik. And it's very special to me because it inspired me. It inspired me to think that you could probably build whatever you want in Mexico. It didn't have to do with building codes and people looking over your shoulder and homeowners associations telling you could do this or you can't do that. Look at this. It's incredible to me. I have always admired this house. As a matter of fact, those tall, skinny windows were my inspiration for making the 18 foot tall windows. There are five of them in my house. My house certainly isn't this ornate. I kind of like the plain look, but those tall skinny windows, that's where the idea came from in the back of my mind. If you happen to be the person that lives there, thank you.
We are sitting at the exit of La Floresta, that will be Upper La Floresta, and we're going to cross the Caratara to go into Lower La Floresta. That thing across the street is a fish sculpture. It's the symbol of La Floresta. The white thing is its head and the green part is its tail. That restaurant across the street is the one that was owned by Perry Marsh, the killer dude. If you go to my story about expats hiding in Mexico, you can get the rest of the story. This red house down here, I used to live in it. And I think I've told the story before about having to trim that tree right there. There are two driveways. That black door right there. I could drive my Suzuki in there, there's a driveway inside the wall, and outside the wall there was room to park my 33-foot Southwind motorhome. The problem was that that tree right there had a limb sticking out so I couldn't get into the driveway with the motorhome. I think I told this story in one of my videos before, so I'm going to tell this one really fast. Apologize if you've heard this story before. The deal is that I could back my 33-foot Southwind motorhome into that driveway, but there was a limb on that tree hanging out so I couldn't get in. So I got my little saw out, got up on the back of the motorhome, went and sawed off the limb. Well, I got half of the limb sawed off, and the new neighbor, Dick, whom I hadn't met yet, came out and said, Hey, I've got a big saw, I've got an electric chainsaw, and I've got a bow saw. So he went back in the house, and he got his saws, and he came out, and we sawed off the rest of the limb, and got the motorhome backed all the way in, and then we looked at the tree and said, hey, we ought to saw that limb off of the other side to balance the tree. So we pretty soon had a pretty good sized pile of limbs out there, and here comes the little white Volkswagen La Floresta police car. And the guy gets out and he says, hey, you don't own those trees. Your landlord doesn't own those trees. Those trees belong to the city of La Floresta. He hands me a police walkie-talkie, and I'm talking to a guy who says I am the head of the La Floresta police, and I will arrive shortly upon the scene to assess the damages do not leave the scene. So, as the white Volkswagen drives off, we start piling all the big limbs underneath all the little limbs and leaves and trying to make it look like we have done as little damage as possible. Momentarily, a La Floresta police truck arrives with two ninja costumed officers in the back and another one driving, and a guy gets out of the passenger side with a three-piece suit and walks towards me. I'm standing in the middle of the street, ready to meet my fate, holding the smallest saw we could find, and he extends his hand but goes right past me and shakes the hand of my neighbor Dick apologizes to Dick if he's caused us any trouble, gets back in his pickup and drives away. And I look at Dick and say, what did I miss? Dick says, in a very jovial mood, oh, I didn't tell you. My wife's on the board of directors for the city of La Floresta, and she hired him. So I guess, like a lot of places in the world, it doesn't matter what you know, it matters who you know. In case you were wondering, yes, those horses back there are for rent. You can take a little ride around town on a horse, a guided tour. We are at the very bottom of the Wednesday Tiangas in Ahihik, and this street where we're going to turn around and go back along the other side of this wall um, is the dividing street between Ahihik and La Floresta. There's those horses for rent. We're going to go down here in Lower La Floresta to the street that goes along the lake. There's some new construction. Nice houses down here. Over to the right is the uh, yacht club, and they actually have a marina there. And now we're going into the Hotel Real de Chapala. 
this is a very nice hotel. And, well, I was just going to drive around today, but... Let's go in. Buenos días. Hola, ¿cómo está? Bien, bien, usted. Todo bien. <risa> ¿Cuánto cuesta para uh, cuotos? Una habitación. Uh -huh. Garden View, 2585. Ajá. Uh -huh. Baja a Lago, 2781. Ajá. Uh -huh. Y Alta a Lago, 2475. Gracias. De nada, señor. Está bien, un uh, video. Pues, sí, 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 adelante. Gracias. Buenas tardes. Hola. Boat tail grackles. What are they looking at? They're all looking up. Maybe they're waiting for a coconut to fall. I don't get it. What are you guys looking at? Huh? <laughs> Oh my gosh, those have to be buzzards. Hope you enjoyed that. They used to have five stars on the sign out there. I've stayed in five star hotels and this one is really nice, but there was always the question about where'd they get the stars. <laughs> it is very, very nice. So now we are crossing from La Floresta back into San Antonio Tlacapan. And we are about behind Walmart up on the Carretera. We'll do San Antonio another time. There are a lot of different kinds of neighborhoods in San Antonio, uh, closer down by the lake, big, beautiful homes. North of the Carretera, smaller, uh, more modest homes in El Parque. Uh, Super Lake, the uh, grocery store where you can find a lot of imported foods. Hope you enjoyed the tour today. Uh, next time we'll go up on the hill so we can look 
down with more of a view. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.